Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Synchrobol Space Program 1.12. In this video I am testing out a new upper stage for use with the Orion carrier plane in my To Mars and Beyond series. This is a Hydrolox upper stage, hydrogen and oxygen, meant to be very efficient and it is meant to be recoverable. So far in the To Mars and Beyond series we've been using a hydrogen-oxygen stage that isn't recoverable. That does provide us with a lot of extra delta V because they're very thin tanks actually and it's all very lightweight as far as its dry mass is concerned. With a recoverable launcher like this, or recoverable second stage, uh, we have a much greater dry mass and therefore we can't get quite as much payload to orbit with it, but it is recoverable, potentially. We haven't tested that out yet, so we are going to test it. And it is basically a downsized Venture Star. I'll have to make downsized um, aerospike engines for it. Right now I don't have those. Uh, so we're using the same engines that we had on the stage that we used in the Tomorrow's and Beyond series. That was just a normal stage. And we had four of these engines, so we have four of them here. And we'll test it out like that. Though probably I should have a body flap with it if I'm going to use these four. If I really want to stick to these four, which is a possibility. Aerospikes are heavy and we want to limit how much dry mass this has. Uh, I'll probably tuck them in a little bit and we'll make recesses. Uh, so that they'll fit inside a little bit more and then maybe I'll add a little body flap too. We're really not using most, well, we're using most of the volume of this, but we've got plenty of spare room if we want to tuck the engines in. We've got uh, available 111 kiloliters, so basically one-fifth of it, and that's already taking into account utilization. So the utilization was 90% and we still have 20% uh, spare room inside of it, so we can certainly tuck those engines in if we want to. Or I could come up with some uh, aerospike for it if I think that's best, but that really depends on the balance of it and exactly how much it can carry to orbit right now. We've got fairly big wings, so if it turns out that we don't need as big a set of wings or canards or vertical stabilizer, we can cut down a mass like that. And that might be helpful, but you know, maybe we just want to straight up maximize how much payload we can carry, in which case we'll skip the aerospikes because they're heavy, these are lighter weight than the aerospikes would be. So yeah, here it is on the Orion carrier plane and we need to test out A, whether the Orion carrier plane can actually loft this up to the right speed so the Orion carrier plane can get to where it's going because it has to be able to land at the Bahamas and then this has to carry the payload, which is one of our standard sort of nuclear thermal propulsion tanks that if you've watched my To Mars and Beyond series, we've carried many, many times to orbit. It's just a tank. I didn't put the comms or docking ports or anything like that. Just a bare tank. And so, yeah, it's not that much. Uh, we have to be able to carry that, that's for sure. The total actual mass of the tank is just 32 tons right now. We should be able to carry more than that, but we'll see. Uh, again, recoverable stuff, it's complicated. And this is a finicky design because it's a space plane-ish sort of thing. Though Venture Star, I mean, I've sort of made it a scale down Venture Star and it had very good margins. After all, it was supposed to be an SSTO. We'll see. Okay, here we go with this interesting sort of deal with the payload fairing on top of it and brace like that. Of course the brace will have to be decoupled before this thing can re-enter so we will have to test that as well. Anyway, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. Of course it's just the carrier plane initially. This has a lot of bulk to it. I checked the volumes and everything, it's all quite legit. I've seen this sort of proposal before, but it's pretty darn rare. I couldn't tell you where I saw it because it's not exactly a common idea to have a fairing like this uh, on the nose of a space plane. So we're looking for 4,000 meters per second orbital velocity from the Orion carrier plane, per usual. That is what it needs to get to. Yeah, it looks like it'll be close, but not quite here. Might be a little bit heavy for it. Well, yeah, we'll have to make adjustments for that. Oh, what, what? No, 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 I didn't say anything like that. Okay. All right, well, let me make sure we have the RCS here on. And that we're controlling right. 
Okay, fairings off. Well, that didn't work right. That that doesn't seem like the most vigorous decoupling ever, does it? Um, <laughs> I was hoping for a more decisive decoupling, but okay, right. So the fuel down and go. Uh. Ah. Oh, wow. Oh, it took off a wing. That's no good. Seems like we have plenty for orbit. Let me make some adjustments here. Okay, so I've reduced the fuel load in the mini star, which is what I call it, the reduced size Venture Star. And so that'll help the Orion carrier plane get to the speed it needs to go to. But I've also action grouped the fairing decoupling and that's because the fairings not only have a decoupler but they also have a very small little solid fuel engine or separatron built in and um, for some reason that wasn't activating on the previous launch so i'll just use the action group which has both decouple and activate engine at the same time hopefully we can get those off more properly but we'll see sas on throttle up and ignition and launch uh, maybe my trajectory wasn't quite as good because it doesn't seem to have helped too much I really need to cook up a KOS script for this it's a bit complicated though well that'll have to do for now okay okay this time they went off properly All right, on we go. Uh, six and a half minute burn time. And then it has to come back down, so we can't use all the fuel. Okay, we are passing by Florida here. Not too far from making orbit. We're primarily carrying liquid hydrogen, so that's why we've got so much liquid hydrogen there. Okay, 307 by 263. Should be good enough. All right. Let's see now. That should decouple the payload. But should I even do it through normal staging? I think I'll just uh, click like that. It didn't make the sound though. Hmm. Well, it's space. All right, so payload's away. Plenty of Delta V left here, so we can carry something heavier. Uh, this thing was just 32 tons. The mass of this right now is 42. So, yeah. Hopefully we can carry more. And ignition. Oh, lots of rolling there. 15 kilometers, I guess I'll take that. Oh, normal. Well, actually, that orientation is fine. Let me uh, jettison the... The adapter. Okay, the adapter is away. That was successful. There's still no sound. I need to check on the sounds on those things. Not critical, but still. Okay, re entry posture, just like the shuttle for now, unless I discover something different. And we are in the atmosphere. Currently 40 tons. Its dry mass is 32.65 tons. So right now its dry mass is heavier than the payload. We might want to tweak that. I'll see what's reasonable. We do have those engines sticking out there, so potential for them blowing up is high. I don't believe I put any special heat tolerance on them. They're not that that heavy so hopefully they won't change too much okay well we are below 100 kilometers things seem balanced so far but that can change in a hurry uh, we've got overheating on the engines well on that engine anyway beats me why it'd be that engine as opposed to any of the others but 
That's how it is right now. 75 kilometers. We are certainly slowing down. Nope. Oh, oh, oh. It looked like the overheat was going down for a sec, but then it's climbing up again. We're trending towards a positive vertical speed, though. That might help. Well, as we go up, heat is going down. Pitch is still fine. Okay, but we're now headed back down this little bit of overheat there. We'll see how it goes. Could throw us off if one engine on one side decides to get overheated. Uh, yeah, it's getting a little bit hot over there. And off that goes. Well, like I said, they're not that heavy. Not compared to the body, anyway. So, we're not using that much yaw. Oh, look, another one's about to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's holding it just fine. Also, all moving vertical stabilizers and huge wings and... Yeah. It's all good so far, as far as that's concerned. But definitely an argument in favor of the aerospikes, just from heat tolerance perspective. But we could also tuck those in. Uh, there are supposed to be OMS engines for the body, but they're not very useful when we're carrying these four engines. If we had more powerful aerospikes, they might be more useful. So I don't really want to lose two on the same side. I don't know why. Why, why. why is the left side any different from the right side here? I don't know. Well, we're going up again. We're over Mexico now. I guess I retroburned thinking about landing at Cape Canaveral, actually. We should have retroburned a little bit earlier so that we could get back to Tampico. But we'll probably end up somewhere in the middle of the two. This thing probably has more drag than the shuttle. Oh, as a matter of fact, that is... is that Tampico or Brownsville? Um, I think... That's Brownsville. That's Boca Chica. That's SpaceX stuff. Tampico's down the way over there. Oh, we lost that one too. No, I wouldn't mind these other two, two exploding if they're going to go. Uh, balance things out a little bit better. But otherwise, our pitch has not been a problem. Right now, we're definitely falling short of Florida, and we wouldn't be in line with Cape Canaveral anyway because we launched from Tampico. There's one orbit. After uh, another orbit, we still wouldn't be reaching Cape Canaveral uh, because I don't think our inclination goes that high. Oh, they're hanging on, aren't they? Okay, well, we carried ourselves quite a bit further than I thought we would, but the only runway in this path is the Bahamas runway, and we're falling short of that for sure. Yeah, we're not gliding all that way. If we were about here-ish, then maybe we would get there, but right now, not so much. I'm not tempted to roll this too much. We're using a bit of pitch, but not a whole lot. We do need to pitch down soon anyway. We can't keep this angle of attack for too long. And basically Mach 5 is when I would like to pitch down. And so yeah, let's do that. The yaw also gets problematic because the RCS thrusters can't hold it, and we need the vertical stabilizers to do that job to manage the yaw. I'll try to roll using this. I'll take control at Mach 3 myself. Well, it is turning us. Slowly. Okay, let me straighten out before taking control here. 
All right, atmospheric autopilot now. Now well, I am just going to dump the propellant. The one problem we have here is that it doesn't seem that beneficial over our methylox stage, which is shaped like a simple pod and recoverable. This is obviously a little bit more complicated, but it's possible that I've just got it too heavy. I have made it have a excessively conservative dry mass, and maybe I should reevaluate that. Oh yeah, it flies pretty well. No tricks here, these have the fire module on them. Adding the body flap though uh, might actually unbalance it, or at least uh, cause it to be nose heavy. Okay, gear down. We'll see what the stall speed of this is, or get a sense of it anyway. Okay... Well... Slowing down. We are braking, and basically landing speeds comparable to what the shuttle had. Now we're skidding off to one side here. But yeah, 100 meters... Oh gosh, what just happened? Oh, game. Well, anyway, that's why we need runways. Now it's paused because it's deciding what to kill. Um, Alright, um... Ooh! Well, I didn't put any extra crash tolerance on this thing, clearly. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it's promising, of providing that we get back to a runway, but... Um, it, it has some deficits, clearly. So, I'll continue working on it, but... Yeah. Yeah. That is the mini star. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.